Hey guys, welcome back to Texas Yacht. It's uh, mid-June right now. The cornfield is pretty tall, as you can see behind me. Uh, you can also see that there's quite a bit of rooting behind me. There's actually a, a huge uh, mud hole just behind me. Um, I took the drone out and kind of like flew this, this cornfield just to see what kind of damage we are looking at here and where they come in. There are quite a few trails going through. Um, some areas where there's more damage than others. It looks like there's a property uh, behind the field where some of these hogs come in, but just judging by the size of this, this mud hole and the trails around here, there's gotta be um, uh, at least you know one bigger sounder, probably multiple sounders. Um, the challenge obviously with the corn, uh, you know, you, you can't see them in there. Once they're in there, there's really no chance you can, you can pick them up. You would need an, uh, a thermal drone or something to, to locate them in there, but then again, you know they're in there, then you, maybe you see they're you know, 200 yards out in the field. What are you gonna do about it? This is Texas. These corn fields are huge. Same thing for the Milo, um, a very similar plant than, than corn. There's, there's no chance right now for us to actually go in there and, and shoot them. How we need to approach that though is a place like this, um, obviously is a high traffic place. You should be able to take a few in, in a place like this. Um, out, out down there in the, in the wheat field, in the cut wheat field, um, very open, you obviously can see them pretty good, you can shoot them pretty good. Um, the, the cut wheat is kind of noisy. I did put in a, a lane of corn down there just to concentrate in one spot. Also took my four-wheeler um, and ran up and down um, one lane a few times, so we have some push down wheat, should help us uh, move closer um, and more quieter. Um, but let's get going uh, and see uh, what we can do tonight. So all we saw in that wheat field were really these uh, these lone boars. And just like this one, um, they were pretty far out. We did try to stock up on, on them, but um, with that wheat field being uh, so dry and noisy, uh, once we got within uh, 150 yards, maybe they started hearing us and then uh, took off. So um, we tried actually for quite a bit. You guys can see it's, uh, it's 11 p.m. at this point. We just didn't see any bigger groups come in. And then, uh, like I said, these big boars were just too far out for us. So we packed up, uh, headed over to the other wheat field and actually met up with Micah. By the time he arrived, Micah already had two pretty good sized hogs on the ground. Um, it took probably about 30 minutes, 45 minutes until more hogs showed up. Um, but we had quite the sounder show up here. Uh, towards the back of the field, so um, we moved towards them, tried to kind of like follow the hog trails in the weed. In this field, our big advantage is really that we have uh, some noise cover um, from the road and also train tracks next to the field, so that really helped us to get closer, and we actually did get close enough to approach them. Thank you. 
seriously clever use of the little hazard beacons. All right. <laughs> I love it. I need to pick up a couple of stupid. Yeah, I just want to stick. Shit goes down, and I just drop the stick stick. Hunting for your shooting stick is not as fun as hunting for a <laughs> Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Last time I did that, and came back the next day. Did I show you this crazy drone video of that four I had? That happened. That, uh, that morning, I was looking for my shooting stick. Uh -huh. and, uh, and my mom was with me, who was visiting from Germany, and then my my two oldest boys. And all of a sudden, um, there's this boar just in the middle of the field. A bit too far now. Um, yeah, just in the middle of the field. And he was standing next to a dead sow, one of the sows we shot the night before. And uh, that was the weirdest thing. I thought maybe is that boar actually like mourning? You know, like oh my poor wife, poor female sow, one of my favorites died. But I think we concluded that he was probably trying to mate. <laughs> and was just waiting, for waiting for it to wake up. Yeah. Then I tried to get close and get him with a handgun, but he took off, and then I chased him with the drone. Feels like have flashlights on and everything, and there's still more sticks from there. Look at this picture, how big that is. And the top is in the wrong to go. Oh, yeah. There it is. I thought maybe I got right. closer than I thought. <laughs> mm. Part of the job that all those YouTube videos don't show you. And talk about. <laughs> Clean up the carcasses or landowners get pissed off with the stank. Well, some don't care, yeah. and some would like to have them removed. In this case, we have to remove them. But ultimately, if you leave them like a, a hog that size, it takes probably like two days, 48 hours for it to be gone with buzzards and coyotes, you know. Watch 
get some more mica. Scare y'all. Huh? That's scary. A little bit. Good one. Yeah. A little more. A little one? Maybe 125 pounds. Hmm. Did you get two back here? I just I know I hit one. I think that was the one that we saw flopping out here. I think these two are the ones you shot. I don't know. Two, three. How many over here? Four? Uh, three and a little one here. Yeah. I guess we'll find out. I think that's the video. Oh, the trigger's big. Left it right. Found it? Yeah, when I, uh, nice. tag 13, that, uh, that's right. High. Crazy hole that thing made. I saw that. That's a massive, just a massive. Back to the truck? Yep. Cool. <clears throat> Put your 10,000 steps in. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we just finished up our night. Um, with me is uh, Jin, a friend of mine who joined me tonight. Um, since uh, Chris wasn't able to come out um, and then Micah was, you know, we split, he was in a different field. Uh, Jin, you always wanted to come along. So yeah. that's your first night. Um, we uh, started at that, at that corn field. I have drawn, drawn footage and everything. And there's a, a wheat field, um, which we've been hunting quite a bit too. But uh, tonight was, pretty quiet. We had a few lone boars come through. Um, I had one even before you showed up. Uh, mm -hmm. He came in, you know, during daytime and uh, he was actually moving pretty fast and I think he was headed straight for the Milo field. Um, I tried to kind of like get in between him and the Milo field, but that beat is so t uh, just so noisy, you know, moving in it, walking in it and stuff. Um, pretty sure you heard me and then turned around and, and took off basically. Uh, but anything else which showed up that night was just too far out. Yeah. So um, I think we, we called it a night over there at 11.45, 11.30. Um, we packed up, checked in that, in that uh, cornfield mm -hmm. where I actually baited um, in, in a big mud puddle, but um, nothing was on there either. So kind of wanted to not hang around for too long and waste too much time. And I also wanted you to, you know, actually get some action. And as you guys can see, we had a little bit of action. We moved to a different field where actually um, Micah was in, and uh, that's our old wheat field again. Um, usually produces pretty good. At the time we showed up here, it was maybe quarter after midnight or something. Mm -hmm. uh, Micah already had uh, uh, two hawks on the ground, and actually the, the two here in the front. So one very large sow, and I think she's probably about uh, 250, 260 or something. And then um, the spore on top. So those are the two he had um, when we showed up. And um, then I guess it was still pretty slow, but we, we moved in that field a little further and eventually something showed up. I think we had, yeah, we had one group show up. Actually, f first we had a boar come in. Right? Yeah, and then another one on, the, on this side of the field. I mean, if you're orienting this property, and then as we were stalking further up the field, then that's when the sounder came out right, from the out of the trees, right? Out of the trees. I could not believe how many there were. Oh my goodness. And that's, and that's nothing. Like for the proportions of this field, what we've seen before, that was, you know, wasn't significant. We had definitely more hawks in this field, but it's always fascinating just seeing them come out of these trees. You know, you see, all those you know white spots show up and then there's just masses of hawks uh, uh, coming out of there but yeah, we had this one smaller group and the way that field is in the bag it's just um, you know has a little bit of a dip so a little bit of a hill and they disappear behind it but you um, you could hear them too right we uh -huh. had some squeals come up all of a sudden um, at that point we saw maybe one or two in the thermal and then you hear the squeals you know there's more behind that little hill and behind that dip um, so you know, we, we try to get close. Uh, again, we had 
uh, you know, noisy weed. We try to stick to the hog trails and stuff like that where, where it's not as noisy. Um, and I think um, we got probably to up 100 yards and that's where we decided just to stop yep. and just knee down. You settled know, down. Low yield. profile. And um, and then the, the big sounder was already out and we were just hoping that they would come closer and, it, and they did. Um, and I think we, they were maybe at 70, 60 uh, yards. Once we started shooting, I think they were actually around 60, 50 yards or something. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were close enough that the mm. crappy Leupold LTO, I was able to see, make out the heat signatures, little tiny dots, very faint, but still visible through that thing. Right. So they were really close and uh, uh, the moon was shining pretty bright. So I couldn't even make them out, you know, the contrasting the, like darkness eye. along the, uh, the wheat field there. But they were that close. Yeah. And we were lucky, I mean, so we were right next to a train track here and, and there wasn't a train for a long time. Um, all of a sudden we hear this train come in the distance. I mean, in distance, I mean, it's, it was far out and I was just ready to go. I wanted to start going after them earlier and, uh, but Micah, um, you know, uh, practiced patience here and said, let's wait another five minutes. Uh, so we did, train came, was right next to us, train horn goes off. And, uh, and then we do the count on and uh, start shooting. Ultimately, we have seven hogs, so we took um, five more back there. Mm -hmm. um, four decent sized ones. Um, got another saw over here, a few boars. So and another medium sized guy right away on this side. Yeah, then the little, well, a little bigger than the piglet, but yeah, that, that's in seven total. Um, I think there was one more that was wounded, right? And bent in the tree line, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. I need to check the video. Um, because I, I thought you or Micah mentioned that there was another one that might have been wounded and made it out. Yeah, Micah got one more at the end, right? Mm -hmm. We were already, <laughs> yeah, um, trying to pull the hogs together, and all of a sudden we hear um, another shot go off, and then uh, I think one or two more. Uh, so Micah got another boar um, on the side of the field. It's always interesting. You can, you know, you, you try to stalk up these things and you try to be as quiet as possible and they still sometimes hear you and take off. And then other times you don't even pay any attention to anything. Yeah. And you do, you, you know, pull hawks together or you have the video light going on and whatnot. And all of a sudden there's more hawks coming. Like I, and the know. wind tonight has been extremely favorable. It's been blowing in from this way and I mean, covering our scent away from them, so. Right. Well, it also have some mosquitoes, so. Yeah. It would, have been, mosquitoes. it would have been really bad without the wind in terms of mosquitoes and stuff, so I was glad that it worked out that way. But um, yeah, no, uh, seven hawks, pretty good. Um, one thing, I got to use the Tech 13. It's um, gonna be an awesome footage. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, you know, we had, well, two hawks looked like they were wounded. It was the first two we shot. Um, one actually expired, so uh, there was no um, uh, follow-up shot needed. But the other one uh, was still um, up. Uh, and so I took the Tech 13. Um, the first round I loaded in this thing was a Sabred, a Sabred um, Slug. And I recently had a friend of mine shoot that um, at his farm. Um, that, that Slug has a quite a bit of recoil. I mean, it's a regular, you know, shot shell. There's no managed recoil. There's no managed recoil shells or something. Um, I think, I need to check on the velocity, but it's 385 grain. It's, it's a massive projectile. Um, so I shoot this thing and uh, well, I, I guess in the, the farm and I know you have to, you know, you have to hold on this, to this thing and really, you know, manage that recoil. But um, took a shot at that boar and um, I mean, it's a massive hole. Let's just say that that way. I can't show those. I can't show that footage <laughs> in the video. Probably not. <laughs> uh, YouTube's gonna have an issue with that. So, in doing that, but um, just trust me, it's a big, old, a big old hole. So, um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting round. It's a uh, very interesting and fun um, firearm. It's not a shotgun, it's a firearm. And uh, it's, it's definitely a good tool for what, what we do. Um, you know, having it in my, in my Eberly stock uh, half track on the side actually works pretty good. I can literally um, just grab over my shoulder and pull it out. Um, 
so that works pretty good. My car has a brace on it, um, a fold away brace, and I like that quite a bit too because it does give you added stability. Um, mm -hmm. A little so, more purchase when you're firing for yeah. that recoil. All right, anyways, we're gonna have to dispose of these guys, and um, I think that's it for tonight. That was that was fun. Thanks so did, much, man. Yeah, did you had a had a blast, literally. Good, good. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys again for watching. We'll see you next time. Texas Yacht. Boom.